Hello and welcome to part three. Today we're going to be taking a look at probably one of the most exciting things that you can do with uh, human gen and that is set up um, facial mocap using uh, AR kit. Now for anyone who's listening who doesn't know what AR kit is, is it's a component I believe of uh, Apple's um, facial mo tracking, uh, motion tracking system. So unfortunately, this technique is only available on um, iOS devices and um, the iPhone X or later. So this, uh, as far as I know, this isn't something you can do on Android, uh, at least not this easily. I'm sure there are solutions to do this uh, or at least get something similar out of Android apps. But because of the way that uh, the iPhone X and forward were made using um, infrared and LiDAR and all that fun stuff, it's built in so we're going to be taking advantage of that so here i have our uh relic keeper that we made in the last uh in the last tutorial and right now i have him set up with his uh his rigify rig so if we jump into pose mode you can see that um if we wanted to instead of using uh, motion tracking we could take control of these handles here and animate his face that way. And that's a valid way to do it. That's the classic way to do it. And you could totally, totally get away with that. But today we're gonna take a look at uh, facial motion tracking, which is really exciting. So first things first is select your uh, human gen character. And after you've add, uh, added the Rigify rig and under expression, after you've added the face rig, there's gonna be an option for uh, adding everything through the AR kit. So human gen does include a tutorial, which is really nice. Um, there's a couple things in here that we're not going to have to worry about because of the um, app that we're going to be using. Uh, so we're not using FaceCap or iFacial MoCap. We're not using either of those. We're going to be using a different, a different app, and that's going to make a lot of uh, a lot of these things easier. So to get started with your character selected, uh, up here there's the gears icon under the human gen options that will bring you to the uh, extra settings and under developer tools there's an option to prepare for AR, uh, AR kit so just go ahead and click that the the default uh, settings are the ones that you're going to want for this technique and then just hit OK and that was it uh, extremely simple so now if we jump into the uh, the rig and take a look at what that's done if we try and move these bones now to control the face nothing happens instead what's happened is every part of the face that can be moved has been set to a blend shape so you can see his left eye moving as I control that blend shape there if I control this one here you'll see the left side of his mouth there move up so that's uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. So now we're gonna jump over to my iPhone. Uh, ignore the thirty-eight thousand nine hundred ninety-seven unreplied uh, uh, emails, <laughs> and then this is the app we're gonna use: Face Motion Three D. So go ahead and open that, and as you can see, it uh, essentially uh, starts recording your face immediately. Now there's a couple things that are a little bit different that you're gonna want to keep in mind when you're using this. Um, I, for instance, have a big beard and a mustache, so the facial mocap, uh, facial mocap um, fidelity is going to be lost a little bit on my face because parts of my face are obscured. So, I'd recommend if you're doing a high, um, uh, a big project, to find an actor maybe, or if yourself, uh, if you're willing, go clean shaven. All right, now that we're in the app, uh, we're going to want to jump over into settings. And these uh, are not necessary, but I highly recommend um, paying for these options because it does make the entire process easier. Uh, it's not super expensive, and the amount of functionality that you, that you get from it, I think is, is uh, well worth the investment. So the first one is unlock recording time limit, uh, which I've already done. And essentially what that means is that you can record for longer than five seconds. So without paying for this option, uh, you're locked to five seconds of recording at a time, which honestly might be enough, you know, um, especially in something like this, five seconds, you know, if you actually count that out, like one, two, three, four, five, probably enough to get your shot across. So not necessary to buy this, 
um, and then there's um, the uh, stream limit. So there's different options here for the different programs. So if you jump over to Blender, uh, for uh, four dollars, four and a half dollars a month. Uh, but again, uh, it's five seconds. So if you record and stream at the same time, then you don't need this. I myself like to have a streaming and recording so that I can kind of play around with things. But again, not necessary. So so back in Blender, there's a plugin you're going to need to install. Uh, the link is right up here. That will be in the description. And then the Blender plugin, you just go ahead and download that. And you install that the way you install any other plugin. And on your uh, tab on the side here, you'll see Face Motion 3D. You can go ahead and click that. And you'll see these options up here. So we have the phone's IP set to the same. Uh, so we should be we should be good to go. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you need your phone on the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, that might seem like an obvious thing, but I tend to turn my Wi-Fi off when I leave the house. So sometimes when I get back and I try this method, I'll be banging my head against the wall figuring out like why is this not uh, streaming correctly, and then I realize, all right, I turned the Wi-Fi off like four hours ago and haven't thought about it since then. So if we go over here back in Blender with everything already set up, again, like I said, super easy, very easy to do. All I have to do is hit stream live. And just like that, my uh, facial mocap that is being caught in the app is being streamed to Blender. Now there is a delay. And that's just, uh, that's just one of the problems that we're going to have to work around. Um, that being said, the fidelity that records on your phone is going to be transferred over into the baked keyframes in Blender. So even though it won't play back at the same, when you render it, it will work perfectly well. So uh, let's take a look at the settings here. Uh, one thing I recommend is not having receive audio on. Uh, that might seem counterintuitive because it brings the audio directly into Blender, but it's not synced. So you, can, you have to play around to sync it, and then the playback of the audio is at a different frame rate than the playback of your, uh, of your scene. So that can lead to all sorts of issues that you could just avoid by not receiving the audio. So for this method, I recommend if you're going to do more than one take, um, select different areas to restart your record on, on the timeline. And then you can have uh, subsequent takes one after each other in the timeline. And then you can render all of those out and you can have five or six takes and record your audio separately. So the way that I like to record my audio is in uh, Audacity. Uh, so you don't, you don't have to use Audacity. Uh, I know there's been uh, some controversy uh, the last couple months, I think, with uh, security issues. Um, so you, know, you can use any program you want, really, as long as you're recording the audio. I just find it's easier to record Audacity because I can save that directly to the same folder, and then when I'm in editing, it's very easy to it's very easy to sync up. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do it. Let's do a test. So I'm gonna hit record here in Audacity. I already have everything set up to record. So once I'm recording in Audacity, I go back into Blender, and then I simply hit start recording. So just like that, what is being captured on my phone, as you can see, is being uh, in real time streamed to my computer in Blender. And all of that motion that I transfer uh, is recorded into baked keyframes in Blender. So I'm gonna hit stop recording there. And uh, now the process of transferring the data has to start. So the app is taking that information and streaming it. This is another reason I love using this method. In other methods, you have to bake out an FBX out of the iPhone app and then convert it uh, and then re-import it into Blender and then copy those keyframes over. And look at that, just like that, I have all of the keyframes in Blender already baked, all ready to go. Uh, and I didn't have to export or import anything. So as you can see here, I'm getting, uh, after the keyframes are baked, I'm getting around 20 uh, frames a second, which uh, honestly could be better, could be worse. So just like that, what is being captured on my phone, as you can see, is being uh, in real time streamed to my computer in Blender. And all of that motion that I transfer uh, is recorded into baked keyframes in Blender. And just like that, you're done. So like I said before, the reason I like to use this method and this app specifically is I can do rapid uh, rapid prototyping essentially of takes. I can sit at my computer, I can pull my mic over, 
record in Audacity, record the motion capture on my phone, stream it, and send the information to Blender at the same time, which is awesome. There's no importing, there's no copying of keyframes, there's no uh, conversion of FBX files. It just works and it's extremely easy to use. Um, and like I said, even though it does cost a little bit to get those uh, unlimited options, I think it's worth it. But like I also said, you definitely don't need it. That is definitely not going to make the difference between um, like a good and a bad project. It's going to be how you budget that time and how you break up your shots. So I wasn't going to talk about this, but I decided that it's a pretty good showcase of what I was talking about. Um, this is another project that I've been working on a little bit in the last couple of weeks, just as some other things come together for the for Relic so that I can, I can get working on that in proper. Um, this was a little bit of a sidestep to kind of explore new technologies and, and different styles. So this is uh, in the style of like a 1980s corporate training video. Uh, this is all done in Blender, and this is a human gen character. And I'm just going to let uh, one of these shots play here. Excellent question. I'm sure you're going to fit in just fine here. There's nothing we value more here at the Relapse Corporation than an inquisitive mind. So, it's a little uncanny, uh, and that's not totally unintentional for this video. It's a little off-putting, it's a little creepy. Um, but the, uh, the point is that there's a fully animated character that I was able to make by myself, motion capture by myself, voice act by myself, get this entire video done essentially sitting at my desk and it didn't take that long there's I think five or six shots of him talking to the camera with various levels of acting and all of those are uh, motion captured in this uh, in this method and then the rest of the animation of the body is done to match the motion capture information so a lot of really cool stuff here um, and I hope that you get a lot of good use out of it Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.